So here we go. Liz, are you ready? Yes, sir. All right. Gaveling in the Board of Zoning Appeals June 28th meeting. Uh, Ms. Kukla, will you read the preamble? Thank you. My name is Liz Kukla. I'm the Secretary of the Board of Zoning Appeals. I'm going to read the preamble for you this morning. In compliance with notification requirements of Ohio's open meeting law under COVID-19 emergency declaration, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the City Planning Department conducts its meetings according to Robert's Rules of Order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by a voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We'll also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Please note that all call-in users can unmute by using star six. Next page. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube for public view. We have provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak on a particular case via our website and email. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comments on a particular matter. Thank you, Ms. Kuka. Can you call the roll, please? Sure, Mr. Donovan. Ms. Britt? Yes. yes. Ms. Barnes? Uh, Ms. Faith? Present. And Mr. Donovan. Here. Mr. Donovan, we have a quorum. Barely. Barely. So we should probably um, explain to the to the members that unless there is a unanimous decision, your uh, appeal would be denied. And at this time, you do have the right to request a postponement until we have more than three members present. Ms. Barnes is here. Oh, thank you, Ms. Barnes. Okay, scratch that notation. Let's begin our agenda with uh, West 74, so with postponements, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Ms. Kukla? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this has, uh, postponement has been requested by Councilwoman Spencer. She would like more time to conduct a public meeting um, and we could give them the date of July 26th. That's approximately 30 days. All righty. Without objection, board? Without objection. And then, Mr. Chairman, we also have another one. Okay, um, well, hold on a second. Let's oh, get the roll. Without objection. Without objection. All right. I think we got all four. Go ahead. Next one. We have one more that's not going to be on the screen today as it um, came in a little later last week. Um, it's calendar number 21-44. The appellant um, requested a postponement, uh, one postponement way back in April, on April 5th. Um, they're trying to um, update the plans to conform with the zoning code. Um, they're saying that the uh, working with the architect and considering these changes is taking longer than they expected. So they need, uh, they're requesting a second postponement. Um, and we could give them to um, August 23rd. That would be two months. Hopefully that would be enough time. Yes. Board, let's say you without objection. Without I'm objection. I am also without objection. What happens is that? Objection. Okay. All right. So now oh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Yes. Chairman, sorry to interrupt you. I do see uh, Lauren Gordon on the line and I, he may want to speak. I believe I heard him trying to speak up. Uh, thank, thank you, Ms. Kukla. Actually, August 23rd would be fine. It would be fantastic. Great, perfect. Okay. Which, which, which address is that for? I'm sorry. It's on Seven, Harvard. Yeah, sorry. It's 7723 Harvard Avenue. 
So they're allowed to do two objections. I mean, two. Uh, uh, Postponements. Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, you know, that's that's unusual uh, to, to councilman's concerns. Uh, as you know, the board generally only allows uh, one postponement request per applicant, the city and the council person. But uh, we have been allowing for um, uh, different um, or, or extensions of the rules due to the, uh, with the COVID issues or the COVID um, pandemic emergency. So we've been a little more relaxed with it during this time, Councilman. Okay, thank you. Yeah, plus if anyone can work out more issue, more zoning issues when it to us, it's always a good thing, so. Right. All right, so uh, does Councilman Brancatelli still have a case? No, that was my only one. That was his only one, yeah. Okay, well, thank you for joining us, Councilman, and have a good day. Mr. Chairman, we have uh, Nicole Calhoun and Jeff Kovac with their hands raised. All right, uh, what say you? Hello, um, good morning. This is Jeff Kovac. I just had a quick question about the postponement. So, the one with on um, 1317 West 74th Street. So, do you will you send out new like? Um, letters by mail for that, or just how do we go about giving our testimony? Uh, Mr. Chairman, to the um, commenter, uh, this is a, and it will be a standard mailing uh, again, when we are, uh, we send out the notices about 10 days before the hearing. So yes, we will send you another paper letter. How do I get on an emailing list? Cause my neighbor got it, but I didn't. And that's how I heard about this meeting from my neighbor. On the email list, I will make a note to add you to the, the list. Okay, can I just put my address in the in the chat? That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Was there another person as well? I yeah. I I did have a quick question to Mrs. Miss Mrs. Kukla, uh, Mr. Donovan. Could you give me the date again for uh, 21090? That's the West 74th Street case. Yes, July 26. 26, great, thank you. All right. Okay, Alana, back to you. Let's start our agenda. Actually, right. it's, excuse me, Nicole Calhoun, for the, the planner for the last one that was just postponed, 7723 uh, Harvard. Um, I, I would like to um, extend my email address to the appellant so that they can send me the plan so that I know what's going on, what they're trying to do. Um, we haven't heard anything from them until this this piece here. I, I, I believe last time they were here, they were supposed to get in touch with the City Planning Commission about this. All right, appellant, uh, you have some homework to do, so please yeah. take care of that. I, I actually did get in touch with Mr. Riccardi. I'm not sure if I recognize Ms. Calhoun's name or not, but I, I if I could get her email address. I would do it uh, privately on the chat. Yes, I'm gonna do it right now. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's begin our agenda. Okay, we got all the housekeeping taken care of. I think we did. All right, so moving on to case number one, uh, calendar number 21-86, at 1415 Kenilworth Avenue. 1415 Kenilworth LLC owner proposes to establish use as a banquet hall with 283 seats in a G2 local retail business district and an urban form overlay district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. All right, I'm going to read a statement. I'm looking for a response from anyone that is planning to give testimony on this case. The response would be, I do with your name. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Speak up, I do. please. I'll go wacky. 
Anyone uh, else? Sorry, this is Stephanie North. I do, Donna Gregonis. Okay. I do, Timothy Ridgely. All righty. I, I do, Donald Pettit. I do. I do, Paul Glowacki, Demet Architects. Anyone else? I do, Matthew Moss, City Planning. Thank you, Matt. Anyone else? Last call. Hearing none, we go to history. Ms. Kukla. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just like to note for the um, for the record that the uh, ownership has been posted incorrectly. Uh, it, it it was unclear which parcel the um, the building was located on when we created the uh, mailing list. So the correct owner is one four one five Kenilworth Management LLC. Um, and I guess the question would be to Ms. Wagner: Is this significant? Enough that we should do a reposting. Uh, I would say it is not. There's no, the address. The owners is substantially similar, and there's no real reason why posting the wrong owner would affect this hearing. So I don't. I think we can move forward. Is this the legal owner right now of the property, or is this a pending transfer of sale? It's the it's the legal owner. We we double checked with the county records. Oh, okay. All right. I'll go ahead with the history. The property was originally zoned multifamily in 1929. In 2017, it was changed to local retail business district. In 2019, it was placed in the urban form overlay district. Um, for this address in our uh, records administration office, there were no records found. Um, the Sanborn uh, map from uh, 1950s shows a parking lot and a church. Then uh, also, Mr. Chairman, you may remember in the calendar 20-135, a variance request was denied to construct a five-story multifamily building without um, any right, legal good. parking. And um, then, Mr. Chairman, we do see that last year um, in the, well, this is in the RSL system, that last year in August, there was a lot split um, uh, and consolidation that was uh, registered with the city of Cleveland. That's all that I have, Mr. Chairman. Legal standard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Appellant is requesting a use variance and an area variance from the Austri parking requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship particular to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Maurice, uh, can you outline the variance issues uh, of interest today? Sure, we have uh, we have two variances looking at for the looking at two variances for this property. The first one is a use variance. Uh, this is not a permitted use in local retail. It is first permitted in general retail. The second variance is a parking variance. Uh, they are supplying no parking, no on-site parking for uh, the required 48 spaces. So those are the two variances. Thank you, Maurice. Who will be the spokesperson for the project? Um, I will, Stephanie North. Okay, I'm going to ask you to speak up, please, because uh, you're very muted in my ear. Right. Try and try to uh, hone in on uh, the arguments for the variances. Absolutely. Um, is this better? Can you hear me? Go ahead. Take it away. Okay. So um, this year, uh, my fiance Tim Ridgely and I purchased. Uh, the former Holy Ghost Church. We want to turn it into an event venue center for the community, for Cleveland. Um, we think this is a great opportunity and a great use of this building that has been vacant for about six years now. Um, so we are working with Dimmit Architects, who is here today, and I'm in construction, and we're looking to open um, in the spring of 22. 
So if you, next slide, please. Um, and we already went over the zoning, so let's move into. Um, sorry. So okay. So um, this is going to be run by Elliot Events LLC. Um, I'm the uh, founder and CEO of that company, and we want to do weddings, corporate events, um, anything with the city. Um, Community groups, like uh, there's a lot of yoga and dance and stuff in uh, Tremont, and we want to open this up as um, another space for people to come and use it. We have a lot of churches, as you know, in Tremont, and there are not a lot of spaces to have, um, like after a ceremony for a wedding, there's not a lot of spaces no, for reception. Oh, so, um, we would like to open this as um, an opportunity for the so people. Um, and the ballroom upstairs, I will show pictures at the end of this presentation, will be able to hold 20, 224 seated, and the rose hip room in the basement will hold 96. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, hours of operation, we will be open 8 to 10, uh, Monday through Thursday. Uh, Friday through Saturday, 8 to 11, and we close at 9 on Sundays. Uh, we do understand that we are in a residential area, so we are very, um, uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, we we want to not bother people, is the bottom line. Um, holidays will vary, of course, if we want to do a New Year's event. So we're going to have a prep kitchen for outside caterers. It's not going to be, um, we're not going to have um, in-house food. We're not opening up a restaurant. We don't want to have a bar. This is just going to be for events. Um, we will have 80 compliant bathrooms, um, elevator access to the building. Um, if you've seen the property lines, um, you can see that there's not a lot of um, opportunity to get into the building for a ramp. And we didn't want to cut into the front of the building um, and the stairs because the front of the building is historic. So what we have done is um, place the elevators inside and um, there's access on, on, on the east side of the building. Um, we will be soundproofing as we are in a residential area and we've been given easement from both the, uh, the, the owner of the rectory house and the owner of the parking lot to the east. Um, and we are currently seek, uh, seeking a liquor license. Next slide, please. Um, so, solution for parking, I know this is a huge issue for Tremont. I've watched um, Tremont fight against the corner property. Um, we have security parking lot on Tremont Avenue. It's right down the street. Um, it can hold 88 spaces, which is almost double what we need for this project. We have a five-year contract with Dave Raymond Snyder, and um, our plan is to have valet only. So we are working with Town Park and what they will do is set up valet in front of our building and they will be shuttling the carts to and from the parking lot. Um, people won't have to park at the parking lot and walk up. Um, and we also have an agreement with um, Town Park. We believe this is a great solution for um, parking and, and we will require parking for um, all our, I'm sorry, valet for all of our events. Uh, and like I said at the bottom, sorry, uh, it doesn't include community events in case people just want to walk over because they're already in the neighborhood. Um, lastly, we have gone to the Auburn um, Lincoln Park Plot Club, Tremont's Local Design, um, the Economic Development Group, Clean, Clean, and Cleveland Landmarks. We have received unanimous support from every uh, meeting we've gone to. We have support from Councilman Kelly, uh, Carrie McCormick. Um, and I've also spoken with the churches in the neighborhood and they are, they are on board and believe this is a great opportunity to collaborate. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is just showing you what um, Dimit has come up with. This is the basement. So there will be two different event rooms um, available. We have the prep kitchen downstairs. You can see there's um, down at the bottom right corner, there's an elevator. Uh, we put the stairs and everything on the inside so we're not impacting the outside of the building. Uh, next slide, please. Main event um, is our ballroom. Um, same setup as upstairs. Uh, and then the next slide. And then we have uh, more space on the mezzanine. That is it. And then that's where we are. Question. Is that Mr. It? Chairman, we have uh, Donna Gorgonis. Okay, so should, you're done with your presentation? Yes, I, I did not add this slide at the end. 
Let me just ask one point of clarification before we move on. Sure. There's an asterisk in the area that describes the parking right next to quote all community events saying that there will not be a seemingly a uh, contract that would allow valet or would de I guess demand valet parking that for, was quote unquote all events. Mm -hmm. How would you define what is omitted in that rostrum? So it'll be if it's if it's yoga with a local studio like Studio 11 down the street, um, or if it is um, if people are coming to the um, Lincoln Park for one of the art events and it's raining and they need a, a place to go, people are already coming in for that. Um, so it's like anything under maybe 20 people because um, uh, we don't want to have people spend money on $500 on ballet. When there's only like a couple people in the group, um, but it, yeah, community events, uh, yoga, dancing, anything that the churches are already using um, would would be along those lines. Is the parking lot on Train Avenue would that be available for self parking then as well? Uh, we're not currently set up for self parking um, because we don't want to zone it as a, a retail retail parking lot. Um, it's just going to be for a valet, but we do want to offer it as um, Places for other valley companies to use during um, during the year when we're not doing um, events, so we can sell lease it out. Who owns the lot? Uh, Dave Riemann Snyder, who owns uh, Taps and Tails, the the, the dog uh, bar that just went down there. Technically, it's Next Gen Cleveland Development Group LLC. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to open it up to anyone who wants to speak in favor of the project. Uh, just kindly announce your name and uh, give us your testimony. We had Donna Gergonis already. Raise your hand. Okay, Donna. Hi, good morning, uh, Chair and members of the board. Um, thank you for having me. It's Donna Gergonis, the Neighborhood Development Director of Tremont West Development Corporation and Ohio City Incorporated. For those of you who might not know, um, so the Economic Development Committee of Tremont West Development Corporation voted to support all variance requests um, of the project um, earlier in May, as Stephanie mentioned. And in addition, um, the Auburn Lincoln Park Block Club, which we also have the letter here on the screen, um, did review these matters on um, June 21st, so very recently, and they support the approval of all of the variance requests with the condition that a five year parking agreement is signed with that the lot at 1901 Train Avenue and that it is paved as well. Um, and I do know that the community would like to see a signed agreement um, shared with them as well. So those are the conditions of um, their approval. So thank you for your consideration. All right, thank you. Any others? We have Don Pettit. Don, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, the property is a Cleveland landmark. It's part of the Tremont Historic District. Uh, the commission approved the renovation on May 13th of this year. Uh, we think it's an appropriate use for this historic building. We strongly support the project and we have no objection to the required variances. Thank you, Don. Anyone else? Mr. We have Chairman? Elizabeth Kukla with her a hand raised, um, and I'm not sure if Matt Moss wanted to speak as well. Ms. Kukla, what say you? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I did receive an email of opposition from a Mr. Robert Mahalik. Uh, he is expressing that he's uh, very concerned about the uh, noise and traffic, and that's all that I have. All righty. Is there Anyone here who also wants to speak in opposition to the project? I have no hands raised. Mr. Moss from City Planning, what say you? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Matt Moss uh, with the City Planning Commission. Uh, we support the variances. I think as far as the first one goes, the use variance, churches have always been places of assembly. And I think uh, that itself creates a hardship here and, and that I think the reuse of this church as an assembly space 
and also meeting a need in the neighborhood and in the city to have these events located in the city is a good thing. And I think that variance is appropriate. Uh, as far as the parking variance is concerned, I think as all of you know, I've studied the parking in this area pretty extensively. I don't believe that there's evidence that there is uh, an overuse of parking. I think there is street parking available generally at pretty much all times of the day. So I think the street parking supports uses like this. Uh, we are looking at ways in which we can uh, better manage that street parking and make it more efficient. There's a storefront that I believe will be opening up soon, for example, at the corner of Kenilworth and Scranton. So as more uses come up onto the street, we look for ways in which we can maximize the utilization of the street and make sure that it's serving all users, whether they're visitors or residents or that kind of thing. So supportive of the variances as they're requested today. Okay, any others? Uh, Mr. Moss, let me just ask you one question. As you know, we we had to review and we disapproved a change of use on an adjoining lot here due to the fact that there was no dedicated parking. Uh, the argument in that case was that with the new zoning for the area, that that new zoning demanded that we be very strict about the application of variances. How would you say, well, what would you say to those who would say that, you know, you're using a different standard here? And if you are using a standard, what is the kind of the argument for, for its uh, ability to fit this situation? Well, Mr. Chairman, I think I've, I think it, for the, at the very least, I've been consistent in my comments about these types of matters. I don't think that I'm certainly not an attorney, but I don't think that the the zoning, whether zoning code has changed recently or not, matters as to whether variances can be granted or not. All right, board. Any questions, any comments? Mr. Chair, I have a follow up to Mr. Moss on uh, if I could. Surely. Um, in the previous case uh, that Mr. Donovan mentioned, um, you made testimony that the uh, city traffic department had uh, or was going to alter some traffic patterns to alleviate some parking and open up some spaces. Did that actually happen? Mr. Chairman, to answer Ms. Faith's question, the city has not changed any of the striping on any of the streets. Uh, the one exception is West 14th was resurfaced, but that striping was put back as it was. Uh, I think if I recall correctly, I had had a conversation with our streets department or, and uh, the traffic commissioner about changes that could be made if necessary. And I think we're still prepared to make those changes if we see higher utilization of, of, of uh, parking in that area. Generally, we prefer to make changes in response to uh, actual changes on the street. Sometimes we do things anticipatory, but otherwise we want to make sure that we're res responding to a need and not changing something that isn't necessary. Now, it's my, based on my professional judgment, I think we will see uh, as more uses open up on a street, we will likely see higher utilization of street parking. And in that case, I think we're still prepared to make those changes where we can accommodate it. All right. Thanks Mr. for that Chairman, response. We I, I'm, I'm just, I just had a one quick uh, addition um, to Mr. Moss. Do we have a threshold or a timeline that that might be reconsidered then? The changes in the traffic uh, striping to open up more parking? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, to Ms. Faith, I would say when uses open and begin operating based on observations of utilization after that is when we would come in and make any changes. But that might also be timed in and around when striping is refreshed anyway. So it will likely be a combination of those two factors when the decision is made to do so. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Chairman, we have, yeah, we have uh, Elizabeth Kukla and Donna Gorgonis again. Okay, let's well, start with Liz and then we'll go to Donna. I'm sorry, I accidentally raised my hand again. Okay, then it's just Donna. Okay, Donna. Hi, good morning. Thanks for letting me talk again. Um, so I would like to talk about the project that was denied here um, that was mentioned. 
so those pro this project very or differs vastly because um, this particular project is looking to reuse the existing historic building and the existing building is already a hardship. So um, I believe that is many one of the many reasons why this was, uh, you know, in, so uh, largely supported by the community and the community development corporation. So thank you. All right, thank you for that. Anyone else want to add anything to this before we look to entertain a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I did have a question of uh, Stephanie Nord, uh, the owner. Okay. Um, in her presentation, she indicated that the uh, parking agreement had been executed for the satellite lot. Is that correct? That is correct. And have you supplied a copy of that contract to Mrs. Kukwa? Uh, I have not, but we can. Okay, that would be conditional. Mm -hmm. Does you. that does that contract make mention of the reasphalting of the parking area and drainage, etc.? Um, yeah, it okay. does. Um, let me see here. Sorry, this thing kind of long, hmm. and I haven't I haven't read it in some time. Um, let's see. Tenant shall at tenant's cost and expense cause to be undertaken all activities necessary for the construction and paving of a parking lot on the lease premises in a size and configuration suitable for tenants' needs. The cost and expense incurred by tenant for the tenant's work, including soft costs and permit fees, shall be credited against the rents due in an amount not to exceed $75,000, provided, however, that in the event that tenant's business operation does not open to the public for any or no reason, there shall be no refund of the costs and expenses incurred by tenant for the tenant's work. And it's continued for some time, but I think you get the idea, hopefully. Uh, so, Tim, can you announce who you are before you speak? Oh, I'm so, sorry. I was trying to jump in and help there. I'm, I'm Tim Ridgely. I'm the other owner of the property. Sorry about that. Thanks, so, we have Tim. to know who's talking. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, so, uh, to Mr. Ridgely, the, um, is the, the parking lot is paved and properly drained? The parking lot is not currently paved. And that was one of the more significant points of negotiation. We are at our expense going to pave the lot and we will receive some credit from the current owner for that for that cost. Um, but we're we're gonna pay an awful lot of money to pave that that area. So and is it, and it. it needs to be drained as well. Is that uh sure. a part of your plan? Of course. Okay. So I have to seek a permit from the city. I'm sure Mr. Riccardi will make sure it meets the standards. Uh, anyone else board? Anyone else questions, comments? Uh, no, I can make a motion if no one has any. You're ready for a motion? Go ahead, Kelly. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, considering the testimony and um, support from the Black Club Design Review, the CDC, as well as Landmarks, um, the I move that we approve the variances as requested for calendar number 21-086. Noting that the appellant has testified that I was operational be from 8 to 10 Monday through Thursday, 8 to 11 on Friday and 8 to 9 on Sunday, and uh, holiday hours will vary, and that they have a five-year parking contract um, at 1901 Train Avenue. And they will, supply the that numbers. Parking, they will supply that parking contract to us um, before ratification. And how many total spaces is that? Uh... Give again, remind us, put that in the motion. This is Tim Ridgely, that it supplies 88 spaces. Yes. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Elizabeth, could you call the roll, please? Sure. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Ms. Faith? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Calendar 21-86 is granted conditionally pending a copy of the contract uh, lease agreement with the parking um, on the other on the other parcel. And it'll be ratified once we receive that. And our next hearing date is July 12th, just for your um, just for your records. Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. We'll go to the next case. Thank you. Moving along.
calendar number 21-89 at 1825 West 57th Street. This is a public works invoice number W07010134300. Stephen Warner, owner, appeals under the authority of section 76-6B of the Charter of the City of Cleveland and section 329.02D of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances from the decision of the hearing officer dated April 19th, 2021 to uphold the City of Cleveland Department of Public Works issue of the invoice W0701010343 regarding abating nuisances, parenthetically grass cutting at the subject property filed May 27th, 2021. All right, thank you. I'm gonna read a statement. I'm looking for a response of I do with your name for anyone that's gonna testify on, on this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do, Natasha Brewster. Thank you. I do, Ariel Kolk. Okay. Next. Anyone else for this case? If not, we'll do the legal standard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Appellant is appealing an administrative decision. The standard of review to be applied is whether the administrative decision was illegal, arbitrary, capricious, unreasonable, or unsupported by the preponderance of substantial, reliable, and probative evidence. If appellant fails to meet this burden, the administrative decision must be affirmed. All righty, and Maurice, do you wanna summarize again? I think that's pretty much our summary, but go ahead. Yeah, that is our summary. I believe this is just a grass cutting, an appeal of a grass cutting uh, ticket. Okay. Who will speak on behalf of the appellant? Is there someone here who's filed this case before us? I'm not hearing me. I don't see Stephen Wagner here. No. Are there any call in users? that have uh, are looking to unmute, that would be star six. I'll tell you what then, we're just gonna have to put it to the side and go to the next case and we'll revisit it at the end of our agenda to see if the person has shown up. And if not, we will dismiss the, the case. Okay. So sorry about that, let's uh, move on. What's, what's the next case? Uh, our next uh our next two cases were postponed so we skip to uh the next case which was postponed from june 14th of 2021 this is calendar number 21-063 at 6908 southfield avenue nicholas rosakis owner proposes to erect a two-story two-family excuse me, erect a two-story single family residence with a detached garage on a 5,000 square foot lot in an A1 one family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances of which there are seven variances being requested uh, as stated in the agenda and the public record. I noticed that there's some all caps directions in the right up here. Should we just read those in as well? Certainly. Under section, uh, this is number seven, under section 341.02, which states that city planning approval is required to the issuance of a building permit filed April 26, 2021, testimony taken. Second postponement made at the request of the city for new information to be postponed in the public record, postponement made at the request of the city to allow time for design review to take place. All right, thank you very much, uh, Faith. Uh, I'm gonna read a statement. Uh, everyone who's gonna give testimony on this case, I'm looking for a response of I do with your name. Here we go. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? 
I do, Nicholas Rosakis. Thank you. Anyone else? No one? City planning? All right, uh, hearing none, we will move on to history and legal standard. Mr. Chairman, we read the history into the record at the last hearing. You are correct. Sorry about that. That's okay. Remind us of the legal standard, though, Lori. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Appellant is requesting area variances from the maximum gross floor area, rear yard, side yard, accessory building maximum gross floor area, and distance requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Maurice, so summarize what we're looking at here for variances. Right. Well, I'm, I'm not going to go over all of the variances because we've already looked at this. I think the, the primary one and the reason it was postponed in the first place was the front yard setback, which I was able to go out into the field and confirm that it's a 30 foot setback for the adjacent homes on the street. Um, and I believe Mr. Riccardi uh, it can confirm this, but uh, the uh, Building and Housing Department re-adjudicated this project and is now written up for a front yard setback variance which it was not in the past. So that's the only change to the uh, to the case. So does the appellant, does his plans indicate that he complies with that? We have not seen any updated plans at this point. Okay, good place to start. And we have Nicholas Rosakis uh, raising his hand. Nicholas, take it away. I also measured it is 30 feet and I, sent the uh, uh, Elizabeth Kukla the updated plan with the 30 foot setback and everything else is pretty much the same. I just pushed the house back to to meet that requirement. Elizabeth, did you receive such plans? Mr. Chairman, I, I did receive them this morning. <clears throat> so we are, um, I, I wasn't able to read the dimensions on it. I don't know. I did send it over to Mr. Rulins. I don't know if it's something he can see better, but um, I don't have my email up on my computer at the moment, so I can't see it. Um, it was just sent this morning about 10 minutes before the uh, before the hearing. So we really haven't had sufficient time to review it. I know that there was a problem with the plans in the past that the front yard setbacks and the dimensions were so tiny. They were really illegible. So I, I do think we need a, a very clear drawing that uh, states the dimensions. So do I, and I think having a submission on the day of the hearing for us to properly review it is unacceptable. Mr. I mean, Chairman. This is, this is the current site plan that I have, and as you can see, uh, you can't read those numbers. Right. Or Mr. The, Chairman, go I'm ahead. Sorry. sorry, this is Liz Cooper. I don't mean to keep interrupting you, but my thought on the, um, on the drawings that don't show the, or that we can't read the dimensions on, um, the board, of course, can um, consider the variance today, and um, we can make it part of the resolution that the appellant has stated that he will meet the the front setback requirements. So, as he said on the record, they're no longer asking for that variance, um, and so you know that's something that the board has done in the past, and it's something that you can consider doing today. And Mr. Chairman, we would we would definitely support that. Just just uh, you know, waiting till ratification until we get plans that has a, the the front yard setback clearly labeled. But we would support that. So, Maurice, are all the other variances? Do you support those as well? Yes, we I believe we uh, we discussed all of those at the prior meeting. Um, and the really the only outstanding uh, variance that uh, that we had actually wasn't written up back then, but that we had noticed uh, was the front yard setback. Um, and I believe the councilman was also in support of the idea that, you know, he supported all the other variances. He just didn't want this house sitting, you know, 15 to 20 feet in front of all the other houses on the street. So I remember that. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Board, what thank you? I remember um, that as well. I think the uh, Mr. Ruland's recount of that is correct. So I think we can go ahead and make a 
conditional motion. I agree. Well, um, I would go ahead and motion that on calendar number 21-063, um, our concerns had been satisfied at the previous meeting, uh, the previous hearing of this case, and that um, now having satisfied the question of the front yard setback, we can go ahead and approve this conditionally uh, with um, when we have receipt of the um, updated plans with uh, legible dimensions. Thank you. Right, here's second. I just second. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Barnes. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Britt. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Faith. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Calendar 21-63 is granted conditionally. It'll be ratified after we receive those um, revised drawings or the updated drawings with uh, with more legible um, text on it. All right, thank you. Thank you, repellent. Thank you, good luck. Next case. Uh, Mr. Donovan, do we wanna check to see if we have anyone for uh, the public works invoice case? Is we'll do that last. Okay. Last of that. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, so moving right along, then this case is postponed uh, from May seventeenth, twenty twenty one. This is calendar number twenty one dash zero six four at twenty five hundred Montclair Avenue. This is also a public works invoice. This is W zero seven zero. 10105-6766. David Ream, owner, appeals under the authority of Section 76-6B of the Charter of the City of Cleveland and Section 329.02D of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances from the decision of the hearing officer dated April 14th, 2021, to uphold the City of Cleveland's Department of Public Works issue invoice W zero seven zero one zero one zero five six seven six six regarding abating nuisances parenthetically grass cutting at the subject property. This was filed May third, twenty twenty one, and testimony was taken. The first postponement was made at the request of the board to allow time for the hearing officer to hold review of the information submitted to the board. All right, thank you. Uh, before I read the statement, is there someone here representing the appellant? There's someone here representing the appellant? Hearing none, I guess I'm going to look for a motion to dismiss. Uh, yeah, no one's saying anything. I will make that motion, Mr. Chair. Right. Dismiss. I would second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second that the appellant is not present for the hearing, and therefore we will dismiss this case. Call the roll, Ms. Kukla. Ms. Barnes? Barnes, yes. Ms. Faith? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. yes. Calendar 21-64 is dismissed. It'll be ratified next week and we will send the applicant a letter. Mr. Right. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry, like, I apologize. I it'll be it'll be ratified on July 12th and we will send it. Ju I just wanted to point out again, we have one call in user. If they wanted to make any comments and they were muted, it is star six to unmute yourself. Thank you. All right. Do you want to go back to the original? Yes, we will recall the case that we uh, did not have any appellant for. Remind us what was that case? Okay, it's uh, Mr. Chair. That's calendar number twenty-one zero eight nine at eighteen twenty-five West Fifty-seventh Street. Public Works invoice W zero seven zero one zero one zero three four three four three. Owner is Stephen Warner. Mr. Warner, are you here or do you have a representative here? Okay, I'm gonna give it a last call here. 
let it note that we both uh, pushed this to, into our agenda to try to satisfy the opportunity, but it was not taken. Uh, take a motion to dismiss. Motion to dismiss case number 21089, no appellant present. Have a second that. All right, Ms. Kuka. Thank you, Mr. Around. Chairman. Ms. Barnes? Ms. Barnes, yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Ms. Bay? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Calendar 21-89 is dismissed. This will be ratified on July 12th and we will send the applicant a letter. Thank you. All right, that ends our formal agenda for today. We have old business. Thank you folks for coming. Okay, our old business, we're gonna ratify one, two, three, four, five, and six. Without objection, board? Without objection. Without objection. Without oh, objection. Mr. Sorry, Mr. Donovan, um, calendar 21-85 is not ready. That would be number three, correct? Right. Right. Okay, then let's do it again. And we're gonna ratify one, two, four, five, and six. Board without objection. Without objection. Without, without objection. objection. Thank without you. objection. We are finished. We are done. Unless there's any other business that the board wants to bring up at this time. I move we adjourn. You got it. We have a second. Thank you. All right. Thank you, folks. Second.